Waters. Uh, Mr. Waters, thank you for joining us this morning. You know, 28 days in the trial, 70 witnesses, yet only three hours to reach a verdict. How do you explain that? Well, I think I explain it with uh, what you heard the jurors say. Uh, we presented a very uh, compelling and strong case, and I think that it didn't take them long to, uh, to figure this out. Uh, they looked him in his eyes, uh, much as I've had the chance to do, and uh, realized who this person really was. And I think that really uh, was the final thing that led this jury to, uh, to come to the right conclusion. You finally did. You started out, though, with two jurors saying not guilty, one juror not sure. Was it that video that made the difference? Absolutely, I think it was. That was something uh, that uh, uh, the defendant could never account for. Uh, and I think, though, he was still hoping that that evidence wouldn't be as strong as it was. Uh, he initially claimed, uh, because there was one young man who thought he heard him on the phone, and he said, well, he's got to be mistaken. I think he thought he could get around that. Uh, but as we continue to put up family and friends, people who were very close to him, none of whom who knew who he really was, uh, it became very compelling, and I think that's what motivated him to try to take the stand and see if he could give one last closing argument to these jurors. Well, that's what uh, I wanted as to you ask. heard, though, it didn't work. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Were you surprised he decided to testify? Uh, no, I thought that he would do it all along. Uh, I think that uh, he's been able to, uh, in this community, he's been way, able to talk his way out of accountability his entire life. And people like that are convinced in their own ability to do so. Uh, so the second the defense put in an exhibit in the case, uh, I was pretty convinced he was going to testify. That's usually a pretty good indication. You mentioned that he talked his way out of accountability his whole life. He's a skilled attorney. So what was your strategy going in on cross-examination? Well, my strategy was to initially establish that and establish who he was. I thought it was very interesting that he would not even concede to these jurors that he was wealthy. Uh, and uh, that was sort of the idea, was to get him uh, talking about himself and about his life, uh, but then to, uh, first of all, hammer home the uh, financial aspects of this case and the many lies that he had told to people that trusted him, and then move into uh, the specifics of his new story that he was now telling the world for the first time, at least publicly. And I think that's very compelling uh, and uh, ultimately um, was convincing to the jury. Yeah, well, once you, can, once you definitely establish that he's a liar, has been a liar for most of his career, that's really the kiss of death for a defense witness, right? Well, I think it is, but it's not just being a liar. In this case, it was him being a liar about being at the scene with the victims just minutes before their cell phones went silent forever. And that is a very compelling lie. And, and of course, I made the argument to the jury, and the team did, and this was obviously a team effort, uh, that you know, what kind of reasonable father, father or husband uh, would lie to law enforcement about such a crucial fact in that moment, and only one who uh, really knew what had happened. Uh, but when you lie about being at the scene with the victims just minutes before the crime happened, uh, that's pretty compelling evidence. Are you now looking into the death of the Murdoch's housekeeper? Well, I can't comment on any pending investigations. Uh, this thing uh, um, that uh, has been investigated by SLED and the South Carolina State Grand Jury, which I'm fortunate to, uh, to lead, uh, is far-reaching into a lot of different areas. I can't comment on, on any pending investigation. Though. Sentencing this morning, what do you hope to see? I'm sorry, say again? The sentencing is this morning, what do you hope to see? Uh, well, this morning I hope to uh, see uh, a just sentence from the judge. Uh, I think that we will have a, uh, a short presentation because the judge has heard it all. Um, I'm not going to comment on the specifics of sentencing because it hasn't happened yet. Uh, but uh, I do think that in the end uh, we will have a just result for Maggie and Paul. Uh, who, again, we cannot forget in all of this uh, case as long as it's gone on and as 